Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. Today we continue our analysis of bullying in America and how the radical LGBT community has unleashed an epidemic of bullying unlike any seen in American history. We have the president bullying the Supreme Court. We have the LGBT community bullying everybody. We have Muslims bullying the entire West. We have street thugs in Baltimore bullying cops. We have the ACLU bullying Christians. We have Obama bullying the Supreme Court. We have illegal aliens in the U.S. bullying states for rights they're not entitled to. There is an epidemic of vicious bullying unlike any in American history. And there is no better example of this. And it's quite ironic, by the way. It's an example of a far leftist, incompetent, through and through, never should have been on the radio. But of course, it's NPR. NPR, as I have told you, never, ever, ever should have been funded. NPR is a left-wing outlet for the mouthpieces of the far left. Yesterday, the left-wing candidate, Bernie Sanders, who is unelectable at any speed, goes on uh, an obscure talk show host's program on NPR where this anti-Semitic woman blindsides him with an accusation that approaches that of Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany. I want you to listen to a creature called Diane Rem of NPR blindsiding the Jewish candidate, a communist at that, by the way, Bernie Sanders. Listen. Senator, you have dual citizenship with Israel. Well, well, no, I do not have dual citizenship with Israel. I'm an Amer- That's, I don't know where that question came from. I am an American citizen, and I have visited Israel on a couple of occasions. No, I'm an American citizen, period. I understand from a list we have gotten that you a were list. on that list. No. Forgive me if that is... No, that's some of the nonsense it. that goes on in the Internet, uh, but that is absolutely not true. Are there members of Congress who do have dual citizenship, or is that part of the fable? I, I honestly don't know, but I have read that on the Internet. You know, my dad came to this country from Poland at the age of 17 without a nickel in his pocket, loved this country. I am, you know, I get offended a little bit by that by that comment, and I know it's been on the Internet. I am an, obviously an American citizen, and I do not have any dual citizenship. All right. All right, so there is a woman who should be fired, She's, of course, incompetent at any speed. She's protected by the government because it's NPR. And my headline is NPR Red attacks Pinko Bernie Sanders with Jewish blood libel. NPR's Diane Rem surprises Bernie Sanders by telling him he has dual U.S.-Israeli citizenship. Now, of course, Sanders should be shocked because this is something that you would have expected in Nazi Germany in the 1930s if you went before, let's say, German Broadcasting, German Broadcasting Network, and one of the German uh, broadcasters says to a candidate for some office, isn't it true that you have Jewish blood? And the candidate says, well, wait a minute, why are you asking me that question? The equivalent now of asking if you have Jewish blood is if you support Israel. And now so she throws the blood libel implication at Bernie Sanders that he has <coughs> dual citizenship with Israel. And then she goes on and doubles down and says, we have a list at NPR of other members of Congress who have dual citizenship. Isn't this amazing that an NPR red attacks a pinko Bernie Sanders with Jewish blood libel and she's not immediately fired? Well, I would say, where's the Republican Party? But we know the answer to that. Well, that's the lead off today of bullying in America. And we're going to talk more about it. I have one story after another showing you bullying, military gays bullying Christians. You ready for this one? I'll give you more of them. There's plenty of them. California trains professors to avoid microaggressions. Who do you think is behind this at the University of California, which has been decimated by Janet Napolitano? This was once one of the finest universities in the world. It has since fallen into disrepair. It is now in the toilet, in the garbage, because Janet Napolitano has taken over at UC California, UC, uh, the entire UC system. She is now training faculty members at the University of California to, the, to avoid describing America as a, quote, land of opportunity. 
She says those phrases are offensive microaggressions. According to psychotic anti-white activists, so-called microaggressions are subtle actions, usually unintentional, that perpetuate discrimination against so-called disadvantaged groups, even in environments where overt discrimination has been abolished. So the vermin thought police have now infected the University of California with the chief bug, Janet Napolitano, formally training faculty to avoid and root out these perceived microaggressions for the good of all. You want to hear what else they're not allowed to say? One of the largest categories of microaggressions, according to Janet Napolitano and a left-wing fascist goon squad, are those that promote the myth of meritocracy. Did you hear what I just said to you? The myth of meritocracy. The myth of meritocracy? That's a myth? You mean there are people who are smarter than others? There are people who are swifter than others? Are you crazy? Do you have any idea what this is going to lead to? I know where it leads. I've studied these things. Other things they're not allowed to say is this. Quote, I believe the most qualified person should get the job. That's a microaggression. Here's another one. Affirmative action is racist. Hello? What else is it but racism? Other examples of sinister microaggressions, according to Janet Napolitano, are, one, describing America as a melting pot because it forces people to assimilate. Two, stating that there is only one race, the human race. It denies the significance of a person's ethnic or racial history. So in other words, the psychotic leftists want segregation. Asking Asians, Hispanics, or Native Americans to speak up more. That, patholo pa that is pathologic, path uh, I can't even read the word. That pathologizes foreign norms and treats white norms as normal? Using he as a generic pronoun for all people. It makes the male experience universal and the female experience invisible. Using forms where individuals must identify as male or female because it excludes the full LGBT experience. Do you have any idea where this sickness has come from? Do you have any idea where this virus ends? Do you have any idea how a civilization melts down? I'm warning you that if you don't stand up to these tyrants, these bullies, I don't care what they call themselves, the country is over. These are some of the examples of bullying. I have many others that you're not going to believe as we go on in the Savage Nation. If you get a call and comment on this, the phone number is 855-400-7282. If you, if you have any examples of, of uh, bullying that you have seen, that you have witnessed, that you've experienced in your life by some of these, quote, uh, poor oppressed groups, I'd like to hear about it because I am sick of it and we've got to fight back. It is time to fight back against these fascists. They are nothing but fascists in the garb of minority discrimination cases. Period. End of story. Don't tell me this such thing as a meritocracy. Let's apply it to the football field. You're telling me that a 110-pound woman can be a fullback on a football team? Wouldn't that be nonsense? Let's make it very simple for these psychotics. Why, there's meritocracy there. Let's put a 110-pound man in the ring with a 220-pound heavyweight. Let's talk about meritocracy. Why, the heavyweight will blow on him and knock him down. Is that not meritocracy? He's a better fighter. Where are your brains? How do you buy into this crap? How did these infested morons get so powerful? How did a psychotic like Janet Napolitano be handed the keys to the University of California? In my day, that woman couldn't run a ding-dong school. She would have been fired running an elementary school in Mississippi somewhere for the abuse of the children. Now she's running one of the ex-great universities uh, in the world. Look what she's done to it. Of course there's meritocracy. Are you crazy? You mean the engineers who created the first rocket to the moon didn't do so because they were smarter than the people who couldn't be engineers? You mean that surgeon with a scalpel in his hand who performs the most intricate kind of surgery uh, has not achieved that through meritocracy? Where are you brains, you leftist psychotics, you? When are you going to wake up to what you have done to this country and admit finally you're going to call the show one day and say, Michael Savage, I was wrong. Michael Savage, you were right. Michael Savage, keep it up. Michael Savage, speak out for us. Otherwise, all is lost. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. The fight ain't over. 
And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up and go to the corner and come out fighting the next round. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor, but don't cut your gloves off. Because the fight's not over. Justice will come to Ferguson. This is one of the worst people in American history. He's done more harm to the social fabric than all of our foreign enemies combined, in my estimation. Al Sharpton was used as the, the, the street thug for the bully-in-chief in the White House, for Eric Holder in the Attorney General's office. They used this little street thug to turn a war on the police into an epidemic. The street thug, as you know, has not been heard from for a while. They put him on ice because they know what he did, and they know that it's too politically dangerous to bring the thug out from the curtain again. But you're talking about bullying? Does it get any worse than this thug attacking police for defending a city? And that's why I say to you, unless you stand up to these bullies now, all is lost. I know how this ends. I have studied communist revolutions. I know what equal uh, outcome-based programs yield. It yielded this in the, uh, in the uh, ex-Red uh, China. After Mao Zedong became a dictator, he caused the Red Revolution. He unleashed a vicious, a vicious epidemic of young bullies which, who uh, tied red scarves around their heads, the Red Brigades, and they went around, just as these leftists are going around in America, intimidating the middle class telling them that they were counter-revolutionaries, telling them that they weren't PC enough. As a result, the finest surgeons in China were put into the laundries of hospitals, and uneducated peasants from the fields were turned into doctors. Does that sound familiar to you? Do you see what's going on right in front of your eyes? How long have I warned you that there has been a communist revolution in America? You don't understand. It's, it's been done step by step, not through the barrel of a gun, but Obama is so clever I should say the, the people who put the stooge in power are so clever that they used a different method of imposing a sort of communist revolution on America. Now, people will scoff at this and say, oh, come on, Savage. A communist revolution means that all the means of production and control are, control are controlled by the government. Well, my friends, we are talking about the society first. If they intimidate you, if they intimidate the people, if they break down the will of the people, everything else will follow. They are so close now to total and absolute power through terror over the average person that I chose to do this a second day in a row. I am focusing on these left-wing fascist scum, these bullies at every level. I am showing you what happened yesterday where a left-winger by the name of Bernie Sanders was, a, they attempted to ridicule him with a Jewish blood libel because it's not that he was not left enough, it's that he didn't, uh, uh, cater to the Palestinian party line that the National Palestinian Radio espouses. National Palestinian Radio, NPR, is paid for uh, with your money. And the hate of du jour, uh, du jour is now directed at Jews and Israel. Of course, it's not anti-Semitism. It's just called anti-Zionism. But as Martin Luther King Jr. said famously, make no mistake about it. There ain't no difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. He knew where it was coming from. He knew that the rabid left hated Jews. And so there was Diane Rem. By the way, she's of Arab descent. There was Diane Rem ripping Bernie Sanders apart, saying that he was on a list of uh, members of Congress with dual citizenship. Now, if I had ever done that on this radio show, let's say I got, let's say Barack Obama agreed to an interview with his political opponents. And he came on this show and I said to him, Mr. Obama, isn't it true that you're a Muslim? Tell me what would happen to my career. You know that I wouldn't last another second. There'd be a meltdown of this show. But she goes on the next day like nothing happened because she's a member in good standing of the fascist brigades that are running this country. It goes on on every level of our society. California trains professors to avoid microaggressions under that fascist dictator, Janet Napolitano, put there, handpicked by Obama to destroy the UC system. And she sends out notes that you can't put out myths such as America is the land of opportunity or that, quote, I believe the most qualified person should get the job or that America is a melting pot. Can you believe you're listening to this? 
or that you, uh, uh, if you use a form where individuals must identify as male or female, it's racist or homophobic because it excludes the full LGBT experience. Do you have any idea where this insanity will lead? Do you have any idea what this is? Do you understand what they're doing to the faculty at University of California? Another document put out by Janet Napolitano's left-wing fascists is a document entitled The Tool for Identifying Implicit Bias. It instructs faculty how to avoid being biased in evaluations or hiring decisions. Are you ready for this? The document singles out phrases such as hard worker as being euphemisms for bias that must be rooted out. So in other words, if you want to hire a lazy good for nothing, that would be great at the University of California. If you want to hire a moron who can't add two and two and make him a full professor of physics, that would be fine for Janet Napolitano. This is, what, this is what goes on when you've had a communist revolution and the world is turned upside down. And I blame Barry Obama for all of it. He is the most vicious, anti-American creature to have ever inveigled his way into the White House. He was put there by George Soros and the Bilderbergs, as sure as I'm sitting here, and he's not through yet. He's got a lot of months left to destroy everything that's left about this great country. How do you think about How do you feel about that? You better stand up and be counted. I'm warning you. And that means whether you're on a supermarket line or at a PTA meeting, don't let these monsters take over that meeting and tell you what to think. You stand up and you speak out. Be red-faced about it. Be embarrassed about it. But get the guts or you're going to lose everything. I'm warning you. You will even lose your children. What do I mean by you'll even lose your children? Well, in addition to losing your children's mind, you're liable to lose, lose your child entirely. Here's a story you're not going to believe. 11-year-old boy kidnapped by Child Protective Services and his parents were arrested because they left him to play in his backyard alone for 90 minutes. You're not going to believe this story. It was in Reason Magazine. It was also on InfoWars. A couple in Florida were arrested and charged with felony neglect after their 11-year-old son was left alone in the backyard playing basketball for 90 minutes. The child was taken from the parents and placed into foster care. Why were the police called? Because a busy body neighbor called the police because the parents were stuck in traffic. This is Nazism. This is what the left has wrought in America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Though this nation has proudly thought of itself as a ethnic melting pot, in things racial, we have always been, and we, I believe, continue to be, in too many ways, essentially a nation of cowards. Okay, he was one of the worst bullies in the history of America. Quiet delivery, no yelling, no screaming. He used affirmative action his entire life to bully his way into positions he was never qualified for. And then, of course, he was picked by the biggest faker in history, Barack Obama, to be our attorney general, where he spent his entire time attacking police, Right now, we have a crime epidemic in New York and other cities because of the policies of this bully. We have a bully in New York City named Mayor de Blasio, who has intimidated the police. Crime is skyrocketing in New York City. City, take it, check it out. He's putting a thousand new cops on the street, and he won't admit it's because of his policies that crime is spiraling. Now you've got psychos like Janet Napolitano saying it's microaggressive to talk about micro, excuse me, meritocracy at the University of California. Let me remind you of something. Competition is the basis of humanity. I have been in primitive villages. I didn't understand how people functioned in little villages until I went there back in the 1960s as a young, let us call, anthropologist. And I thought it would be some kind of communist system where everyone got along and shared. Well, guess what? Down at the most simple tribal level, it was extremely competitive. The best hunter became the leader. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The best hunter became the leader, not the worst hunter, not the crippled hunter, not the perverted hunter, but the best hunter, because otherwise they would starve to death in the village. Well, nothing's ever changed in our society, ever. Everybody can understand that, except the left-wing fanatics who want something for nothing. You know, I am in the midst of the final decisions on who will win these five scholarships. It's been awesome. I've had 1,700 applicants. Many of them are, are so good, it's hard to distinguish uh, so it's been very hard to pick five out of 1,700, but each of them is going to win $20,000 over two years. The five winners, I promised $100,000 to the five winners, meaning 20 grand each, 
And on July 4th, I'll make the final announcement. One of the essays is entitled, Evil Despises Competition. I'll read it to you. It's 500 words for the Michael Savage Scholarship Essay Contest. And here's what a college student wrote. The competitive nature that exists in the United States is a unique quality which has bred a country of winners. Competing is a basic instinct engraved into the fabric of our human DNA. Rather than attempting to suppress man's natural desires like many civilizations before, the founding fathers of this great nation have harnessed this great motivating force and established a nation where fairness and excellence would prevail. The concept of competition has influenced the structure of our government, free markets, and has long kept malicious power-grabbing individuals at bay. Evil has discovered the tremendous power and influence that exists in America and has coveted to make it her own. This is by a college student. While evil seeks the elevated position of power and control, competition offers a level playing field where pure ideas can be spawned and tested. While evil fears competition and finds no joy in it, competition finds joy in the triumph of good over evil. While evil grasps for uncontested domination, competition aspires for excellence. The competitive nature of Americans is a major obstacle to those who wish to control us. A competitive format of government gives voice to refined ideas which can compete to become law. Thus, when implemented correctly, only laws are created which best serve the will of the people. Evil cannot compete with competition. Therefore, evil has employed the use of deception and lies as tools of progress. This is by a college student. Listen carefully. This is only half of it. As you may recall, in 2002, Saddam Hussein won 100% of the votes during the Iraqi presidential elections. These types of tactics demonstrate that evil will even attempt to provide the illusion of competition. Evil has many faces and can be found throughout the corridors of our government, industry, and the institutes of academia. Evil has taken great strides in advancing its agenda. There have been many attempts to change the very def definition of evil. Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Not only is it their wish to redefine evil as good, but they also wish to redefine competition as bad, the results of which have been a decrease in the quality of education and the dumbing down of America. Two more paragraphs. Competition is not evil, the individual writes, but in fact drives the individual to pursue excellence. The same effects can be found anywhere competition is implemented, be it sport, business, education, or politics. Competition not only requires boundaries and rules, but also self-regulates the limits of those boundaries based on the invested interests of individuals. Therefore, competition is an ever-changing element which self-adjusts with respect to fairness and the quest for excellence. Competition even honors those who have failed in their pursuits and finds just as much value in the process as they do in the results. Evil cannot replicate these outcomes because evil leads by force, whereas competition is self-motivated. Here's the last paragraph of this essay, which is in the finalists' uh, stack. To be competitive is to be American, and to be an American is to be competitive. The terms are complementary. You cannot mention one without considering the other. These concepts are woven into the fabric of this great nation. If this competitive nature is removed from American government, then America, as we know, it will cease to exist. If America does not exist, then what will the world become? The picture is not a pleasant one. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and other evil dictators will finally be uncontested. Evil will dominate our world. As Americans, we should fight to protect our way of life because once evil takes its top prize, competition will not be tolerated. Have I not shown you that all of this bullying is about people who cannot compete on a level playing field, so they're using their sexual orientation, their race, or their disability as a weapon against people who are uh, either by dint of birth or by brains or by hard work superior to them in the world of competition. Write that down because I mean every word I just said. I've spent my entire life trying to succeed in places where I was told I could not succeed. I've been told I would fail where I never failed. I was told I could not win where I won. I was told not to apply for a PhD program, and I applied for it, and I earned my doctorate. I was told I wouldn't last one day in radio because my voice was too New York. I'm in radio for 21 years. Right now, my show is number one on WABC. Right now, my show is number one on many other stations. Who was wrong, them or me? How did I succeed? 
by never giving up, damn it, and I never will give up. As long as I breathe, I will fight for what I believe is right. And what I'm trying to do by example is tell you to stop it. Stop taking it from these twisted freaks. Stand up to them. They're not stronger than you. They're weaker than you. And don't let them use their situation to bully you. These bullies have to be shouted down. Get in their damn face and tell them to go to hell. How's that? I don't care if it's a college administrator. I don't care who it is. Scream in the bully's face. Give it back to them. I don't care if it's Muslims bullying you, telling you that you're a racist. I don't care if it's gays and lesbians bullying you. I don't care if it's street thugs bullying the cops. I don't care if it's lawyers in the ACLU. I don't care if it's illegal aliens screaming that they want rights they're not entitled to. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very, very, very long in this process. I've seen what this has done. I've seen how it's destroyed uh, societies before. In the old days, it came under the guise of fairness. Now it's coming at us from a different point of view. Now it's called white privilege. Now it's called microaggression. But make no mistake about it. <clears throat> you are being bullied out of your life. Your very freedom is at stake. Now, I've said all I want to say right now. I need to take a break. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I was very sick with a virus illness. I had the first flu I've had in, I don't know, many decades. I, I, know, I generally don't get sick. And I got very sick, but I went on the air only missed one day. But I could hardly swallow. I could hardly talk. I'm better, but I'm starting to feel it coming back. And I got to tell you right now, I got to slow it down just a bit. I think I'm overdoing it because I'm very, very excited by what's going on in this world. I see such hatred and such racism being disguised and posed as the opposite that I feel that till my last breath, I'm going to scream about it until you wake up and realize that if you don't stand up, nobody will. There'll be nobody left. Let's take some calls. Jay on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Well, I just wanted to make a point about something you touched on uh, lately before, which is the NYPD and uh, New York City. Right now, I'm 25 years old, and this summer I'm being hired into the NYPD. And just today, you may have saw Ray Bratton being brought up in the news for uh, some comments he made. That yes, I understand right that he can't. He would hire more blacks if more of them weren't criminals. I saw that. Right, and some of them are absolutely true. And you know, if he has a pool of applicants, which myself is one of them who can't be hired for whatever reason, they should not be. And he's being... Wait, wait, I mean, are you saying you're not, you can't be hired? Why not? No, no, I, I'm in the pool of applicants, but some of them happen also to be either black, Hispanic, white, whatever race they are. Why is it such a bad thing for him to say, oh, this person can't be hired because they're a criminal? But no, he gets... Criminal. Anyone who is a criminal or has a criminal background should not be a cop in plain English. Exactly, and the problem is he gets crucified because... He didn't say it in the right way. That made people a little bit... I don't care how they said it. Tell the little Nazis to go to hell. That's my answer. Go to hell. What do you want to hire criminals? Why not just go recruit in Rikers Island? Why don't you give them all a badge and a gun in Rikers Island? Tell them to run amok and, and rape and murder in the streets. Exactly. And the people... That's, so that would be my answer if I were the mayor. Get off my back and shut up. Climb back in the hell hole you came from. Listen, I know what's going on in this country. The, the cities are bending over backwards to hire Muslims right now. Do you know that? Did you see that story? I did not, know. Oh, yeah, look at the cities now. They, they have so many flooding in because of Obama, like in Lewiston, Maine, not going to hire Muslim cops. They don't even know what their background is. Go hire from a pool of terrorists that you brought in that nobody vetted in the State, the State Department. How many of them are members of al-Qaeda or other groups? They don't know. They don't care. Give them a badge and a gun. That's all. All right, that's it. 855-400-7282. It's the Savage Nation. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Yeah, the United States is a government of laws uh, and separations of power, and when a, even if it's an individual district court judge who's making this determination, we've okay. got to go through the process. So there is Obama to, now threatening uh, an individual district court judge who stopped his massive violation of his powers when with a stroke of a pen he said he's going to grant amnesty to 5 million illegals to start with and perhaps 100 million when he's finally through after he's decimated America uh, with an overrun from Mexico and China primarily. But he was stopped by this individual district court judge. Suddenly he doesn't like that. 
The next two uh, two weeks later, he intimidates the Supreme Court. So where do you think this bullying is coming from that we're talking about? It's coming from the biggest bully in American history, Barack Obama. But he is so good at it in his delivery system. By not yelling, by not screaming, he gets his bullying done nevertheless. Where does this come from? How has this happened that our universities now are just filled with little Nazi bullies under the guise of uh, fairness, intimidating everybody into submission? Police departments bullied by the most incompetent captains and district captains you could ever imagine. Far less competent than most of the police on the street are these bullies who bully their way into these jobs. San Francisco Fire Department bullied, bullied, bullied. You've got women running the fire department who, when the last big fire, were hiding two, two blocks away in a command center because they didn't want to dirty their white uniforms. And the firemen were running up the ladders, risking their lives, while the women, the ladies in white, were hydrating themselves two blocks away from a command center. They didn't climb the ladder. They didn't spray the water. But they're the ones who collect the $500,000 a year pensions. How did they get there? They bullied their way there. They bullied their way in by saying you were racist or homophobic by not hiring them to begin with. And then when they couldn't lift the ladder or lift the hose, they said that it's racist to make a candidate to be a fire, a fireman lift the hose. It's racist to make a, excuse me, homophobic to make a fireman climb a ladder and carry a 150 per pound person down the ladder. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? How did this happen? It's happened through the media, through the government education, by a set of immoralities put out by uh, Katzenberg, Spielberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg in Hollywood, poisoning the mind of our children. The mainstream media, while you still think is technically free, has been bastardized by the FCC into a propaganda machine, reporting only what is approved and taking away from the minds of the public stories of a true meaning. The public education system, the schools in other words, have rewarded uniformity, not meritocracy, but instead of rewarding achievement and teaching children that the founding fathers were terror, they teaching the children that the founding fathers were terrorists, they use violence to coerce political change, uh, etc. This is no accident brought about by uh, a mistake in an educational process. This is a process that was brought about by purposeful misinformation. Do you remember the Russian leader Nikita Khrushchev? the man who famously banged his shoe on a desk, I think, at the UN, Nikita Khrushchev, he said that America could ne never make the jump from capitalism to communism, but their elected leaders could be assisted in giving small doses of socialism until America awakens to find itself communist, and thus the infiltration of this foreign cancer, which has infected impressionable youth, which has now spread to the highest levels of office, and now we're sitting here on the precipice of the loss of our freedoms themselves. And that's why I say to you how much longer we can tolerate this until we all fight back as anyone's guess. How long we can tolerate this until America's, these sparks of hatred incited by Obama, Holder, Sharpton, and the others, and played out on the universities and in the schools eventually uh, reaches the point where there is a prairie fire which results in a civil war. Will that ever happen? I pray not. I wrote an entire book entitled Stop the Coming Civil War. Remember it? Remember the book? It was a bestseller for many weeks. Many weeks, Stop the Coming Civil War. What was I warning you? I was warning you that we had a government trying to start a civil war. And guess what happened after the book was published? They attacked the police in America. This is just another stage in their plan. They have many months left to finalize their plan. And only by standing up to these bullies and exposing these bullies and speaking out against these bullies can we stop this horrible, horrible possibility in our country. In my new novel, Countdown to Mecca, I warn you that there are forces in this country that want to do terrible things in the world. Terrible, terrible things they want to do. And only citizens who believe in freedom can stop them. My friends, we are at the precipice. I realize you don't want to accept that it's gloom and doom. Perhaps you're sitting in the sun somewhere or walking in the sun, having a nice tofu sandwich on the streets of Manhattan or a falafel sandwich thinking that I'm crazy. I ask you, look around yourself. How many of those people walking by you can think anymore? How many of those people walking by you are the bold and daring Americans that built this nation? Ask yourself that question. Look in the faces of those husks 
those empty husks without souls, those robots in your midst. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Bullying. Bullying, bullying. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Since Obama has seized control of this nation, he has used the bully pulpit to bully everyone in this nation into submission. He certainly has bullied the Republicans into submission. They don't exist as a loyal opposition. They don't exist at all. We know that. The street thugs in Ferguson, the street thugs in Baltimore, bullying the cops. The ACLU bullying Christians everywhere. Muslims in America bullying you everywhere to tell you that, wait a minute now, how dare you even ask us about our loyalty? You have no right to ask us. What are you even looking at us for? Who are you to say that uh, most of the terrorism in the world is caused by Muslims? Are you crazy? That's, uh, that's not true. And even, even if it is, it's racist. The illegal aliens who have been allowed to, sp- to pour over our borders, running amok in America, demanding everything for free. Yes, you heard me. And if they were all coming here to work, then how do you account for the fact that one third of all of our prisoners are non-citizens? Put that into your pot pipe and smoke it. Obama bullying the Supreme Court, Al Sharpton bullying the police, wherever you turn, bullying, bullying, bullying. There are many examples. In the last hour, I played an example of a creep on NPR putting a Jewish blood libel on the leftist Bernie Sanders, which is kind of ironic because Bernie Sanders is an outright communist from from uh, from the get go, I mean a classic communist, and yet he wasn't leftist enough for the pro Palestinian National Palestinian Radio. Listen to the interchange between this creature on uh, NPR, who I never heard of, by the way. I have no idea why she's on the air, attacking Bernie Sanders, implying he is libel libel as a Jew. Listen, Senator, you have dual citizenship with. Israel. Well, well, no, I do not have dual citizenship with Israel. I'm an Amer- That's, I don't know where that question came from. I am an American citizen, and I have visited Israel on a couple of occasions. No, I'm an American citizen, period. I understand from a list we have gotten that a you list? are on that list. A Forgive list. me if that you little you know, that's Nazi some you. nonsense that goes on in Good the internet. Good for you, Bernie. Uh, Spit in their face. She's got a list that are little there fascist. Members of Congress are there any members of the party there? Huh? You lousy. Or is ah, shut up. Get her off my show. Why wasn't she fired? Because there's no opposition party. No opposition party. This woman never belonged on the air. Why is she on the air? Because she does the bidding of National Palestinian Radio. That's why. Any other questions? 855 Wherever you turn, the Lilliputians have taken over the country. You remember Jerry Lewis with his Labor Day telethon? Remember the great work he did? He raised hundreds of millions of dollars for children with muscular dystrophy. Do you remember what they did to Jerry Lewis? Do you remember what the haters did to him? They said that he wasn't right for the job anymore. Headline. Muscular dystrophy finally ends Labor Day show after firing Jerry Lewis and killing Telethon. Roger Friedman, Showbiz 411. They killed their golden goose. Muscular Dystrophy Association decided no more TV special on Labor Day weekend. This is probably an old story. They had already destroyed the 21-hour annual Telethon after kicking Jerry Lewis to the curb. They said that the show was a fraud, and they got rid of him. And so what happened was they couldn't raise any more money. The show uh, after he left was whittled down to a two-hour pre-tape, a shadow of what Jerry Lewis had done with it, and now it's gone altogether. Why? Why did they get rid of Jerry Lewis? The Jerry's Kids rubric meant so much to people who had little hope and a lot of problems. But the new Muscular Dystrophy Association, the PC Muscular Dystrophy Association, is so out of touch with reality that after firing Jerry Lewis, the organization itself is fundamentally gone. That's what will happen to America if you let the left-wing fanatics continue 
on their rampage against everything decent in this country, whether it be in police departments, whether it be in the military, whether it be in the universities. It does not matter where. The vermin on the left have touched everybody equally with their, with their psychotic poison. Want to talk about that? Have you been bullied? Got any examples of it? KBET Radio. Christine, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, I am a parent from Las Vegas, Nevada, and um, I just wanted to comment that we are living the nightmare that you're speaking of. We um, have been watching as the ACLU and Planned Parenthood have um, combined and are pushing the transgender agenda. They're going into our school districts all over Nevada and bullying them into um, using the sexuality-based sex ed and opening up their bathrooms to whoever wants to use um, the bathroom of their... Right, right. That's what they do. The ACLU is the most dangerous organization in American history. If a foreign power had created an entity to destroy the country, they couldn't have done a better job than uh, pushing the ACLU down our throat. Who elected them to office? Nobody. Who made Ruth Bader Ginsburg a Supreme Court justice when she had been chief counsel for the ACLU? She has poisoned the Supreme Court for the last 20 years. I know who they are. I know what they are, and I know what I would do if I were president. Believe me, I know what needs to be done. If I were to roll up my sleeves, I could clean this country up in six straight months, and I know just where to begin. They're the worst parasites the world has ever seen in this nation. The worst, I know what they're doing. They're trying to poison your child's mind into accepting a perversion that's beyond comprehension. Exactly, and we are, we are... What do you want me to do, go along with it? You want me to say it's okay? I'm okay, you're okay? You don't want to be judgmental about it? When are we going to stop putting up with this garbage? I want to know who is bullying who. Are the straights bullying the gays, or are the gays bullying the straights? Are the, are the gays bullying Christians, or are the Christians bullying gays? Who is the real bully here? Answer, you can figure that out. Does anybody tell a gay how to live? No, they wouldn't dare then why do the gays think it's their right to tell everybody else what to think? Because they can. That's why. It was never about equality. It's that simple. So what's going on in your school district? How are you going to stop this poison from spreading? Okay, well, we have actually, um, we this last legislative session, we um, as parents got together and we had a bill um, to protect the children from co-ed bathrooms. It was called the Student Privacy Act. It was not passed. The ACLU and Planned Parenthood was um, going to the legislators. They were there every day of the whole legislative session um, bullying them. What they're doing is they're going in and claiming that there will be um, lawsuits, and they did the same thing with the school district, and that they have people that will be... All right, when the courts are this poison with left-wing vermin, the people can no longer use the courts. So where does that leave the people? What choice do you have now that you can't use the courts? Since the courts are stacked with vermin on the left, what can you do as a parent to protect your child from the sickness? We're, we're going into the school districts now. We're actually going to school districts. We're going to school board meetings. We're speaking up. They are there at the, at the school board meetings, and we're countering what they're saying. And we're meeting you know, with school I hear in your voice how hard this is for you. You're, you're a nice, ordinary woman with children trying to raise them in a decent way, and these sick degenerates want to poison your child's mind and you're sick of it that's as clear as it's going to get i can't say it any other way these sick degenerates want to destroy your child's mind i will not mince words i don't care what it costs me anymore may this be the last day of my broadcast but i'm not going to lie i'm sick of the sick perverts running and ruining america mm -hmm. I, i'm not going to say anymore i'm in a cold sweat right now from it i've worked myself up into a frenzy because i think we I, if i'm at a breaking point can i imagine what you're at can you imagine what the people are at here, let me show you what just happened in England. Here's another example of bullying. You're not going to believe this story. Legendary rabbi of England calls for Jewish surrender in Europe. England's former chief rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, gave a speech described by the media uh, in, in Herzliya, Israel. And he believed that the boycott and, and what is it, D divest movement against Israel had succeeded in making the state of Israel a divisive factor in Jewish life and the rabbi claimed, as a result, to support Israel was almost impossible for European Jews. He gave up, in other words. He gave in to the Muslim fanatics. And now the Jews in Europe are saying we can no longer support Israel. Now, if this was just a little weakling rabbi in Queens, New York, it would have no meaning. This is an astonishing speech because it came from the former chief rabbi of England, 
who has said he can no longer support the Jewish state because he has been intimidated by the Muslim fanatics who have penetrated and poisoned England and turned it into a satellite of Pakistan. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We continue our analysis of how bullying by the radical left has and is destroying every institution in the United States of America and threatening the survival of the nation itself. There are people behind it. We know who they are. One of them was the mayor of New York, de Blasio, who from the minute he became mayor, started a war against the police, a war he had been involved in for 20 years in his thuggish rise from the gutters of New York. Listen to clip 10 from a year ago. Shortly after he became mayor, one of his first sound bites had to do with the police. Listen to this. We've had to literally train him as families have all over this city for decades in how to take special care in any encounter he has with the police officers who are there to protect him. And that painful sense of contradiction that our young people see first, that our police are here to protect us and we honor that. And at the same time, there's a history we have to overcome because for so many of our young people, there's a fear. So he attacked the police as being racist. He eliminated uh, the stop and frisk law that kept New Yorkers safe under Mayor Bloomberg. As a result, crime has spiked in New York City. Rapes, murders, homicides, burglaries. And so this left-wing fanatic has now said he's adding a thousand police to the streets of New York without admitting that his left-wing fanatical policies have uh, accounted for this rise in crime. Today there were hearings in Congress. New hearings on what's being done to government workers who want to do the right thing. What you're about to hear is an individual in the Department of Homeland Security who was trying to blow the whistle on visas being given illegally to illegal aliens. Listen what they did to this woman in clip 13. From the onset of the investigation, my management began getting complaints from outside agencies and high-ranking officials. As a result, I was removed from the investigation and it was ultimately shut down and closed. Shortly after, I was escorted by three supervisors from my desk and out of my permanent duty station. I was not permitted to access my case files or personal items. I was removed um, initially over 50 miles uh, in direct violation of Title V. My weapon and credentials were taken against the agency's firearms policy. My government vehicle was confiscated. Um, access to the building and all government databases was revoked. I was told I couldn't even carry or own a personal weapon, which is a constitutional uh, rights violation. This is a woman who tried to speak out about corruption inside the new fascist agency, the DHS, handpicked leaders by Barack Obama, who have become into a sort of SS or SA, reporting only to Obama and his sorority. This woman tried to do the right thing. She was a whistleblower. She talked about visas being given away illegally to illegal immigrants. Look what they did to her. They stripped her of her job and her weapon. They moved her 50 miles away from her position. That's what the hearing was about today. This is all because of the bully in the White House who has said, well, you know what he said. He wants illegal immigrants everywhere, and so it doesn't matter whose lives are ruined in the process. Let's go to the callers on KSFO in San Francisco, line six. Orlean, go ahead, please. Thank you, Michael. I'm so glad you were talking about bullying in the university system. My husband has been here working at a university in Northern California for 33 years, and through the diversity training, the political correctness, the sensitivity training, he has seen, he said, it's, it's almost impossible. Nobody wants to talk to each other. They are really cowered into silence. And it makes it really difficult. That's correct. That's what went on in the ex-Soviet Union and in communist China. And it's all come to us as a result of the LGBT community. Listen, I'm not going to mince words. I know who started this. 
I know who the st- I know who started the diversity training. I know who the bullies were. I faced it myself 20 years ago when I was on a local station and was forced to attend diversity training. And I was the only one who spoke out and said, hey, wait a minute. That's a bunch of rubbish. I'm not taking this. And I walked out. And all 200 employees looked at me like I was the crazy one. Well, management eventually eliminated diversity training because of me. And I want everyone listening to me. You don't have to put up with indoctrination. Stand up and walk out on them. Put your body on the line. It's time to fight back. Get five other co-workers, turn your back on them. You don't have to listen to anti-white, anti-Christian, anti-straight hatred. You're not required to take it from these sickos. That's all I'm going to say on it. Listen, I've paid the penalty. I paid the price for my beliefs. Don't think I haven't. What do you think? I just say this with impunity? I have been punished for 21 years in radio. It's virtually a miracle that I've survived and I have a program that is as successful as it is. I have been boycotted by these people. I have been run off stations by these people. They've marched in front of stations, these people. The ad agencies are controlled by these people. Don't think that I'm not paying the price for speaking out. Don't think I'm just telling you to speak out. I'm telling you that it's a fight that all of us have to make wherever you are, whenever you are. Speak out. It may be the last chance you have to speak out. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. We're talking about bullying. I've asked you for your experience in this situation. Let's go to WABC. Hank, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Yes, hi. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. But in a lot of talk radio, it's, o- it's often implied that, like, blacks are the problem. Like the- I'm not even talking about blacks. How is this about blacks? I'm saying it's implied a lot. It, 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 without, without coming outright and saying... Well, I'm talking about bullying. I'm more specifically talking about bullying in America. It really has nothing to do with African Americans right now. Uh, well, like, uh, for example, like when, when you just said that um, in the diversity chain, you said it's an attack on white, uh, attack on white. Well, it is an attack on whites and Christians. I went through it. They singled out whites and Christians in diversity training as being evil. That's exactly what they do. Well, I, I don't, I don't think that that I don't think that oh, whites are evil. Or, and I'm a Christian. Well, that's very, very benevolent of you. I'm very glad that you don't. I feel much better now. I think any everybody is is every race is evil. You know what I'm saying? In, in every race. What you're saying is in every race there is good and bad. In plain English, that's I understand. That. I understand that. I get it, but so what's the point of your call? I mean, we agree on that. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of times since the talk radio, there's a lot of like implications that like it's black, black. So, so take it up with them. Take it up with the people who you think are being racist. I'm not one of them. Okay, I'm not one of them, so I don't have to apologize for something I didn't do. But I'll tell you to show you what a great guy I am. I'll send you a free book, a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca. I hope you take the trouble to read it. The phone number is eight five five four and seven two eight two. When we come back. I've got more sound bites, more news, views, and reviews. I can't give you a little lead of what it is. There's plenty of them. You're not going to believe the stories I found. They're awful. It's getting worse. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Who is bullying who? Welcome to the Savage Nation. I've changed the paradigm of the argument, hoping to save America by giving you the guts to stand up to the real bullies. And you must stand up and say, I'm not going to be bullied anymore. You can take it and shove it. And if a million of us did it or 10 million of us did it, the little rats would run back to the rat holes they came out of. Everywhere you turn, the bullies are out of control because there's been no opposition to them. And everywhere you turn, Christians are being fed to the lions whether it be in, uh, in the military or elsewhere, as I'm going to show you in the uh, emerging segment of this program. Here's a story that I must read to you if I can find it. I pulled out so many different stories today trying to uh, elucidate my discussion on, on this terrible subject that I can't find it. Honestly, I cannot find it. I have a hundred different stories on what they're doing in the military and how they've melted Christians out of the military, again, all under the guise of LGBT fairness. WABC, Allen, welcome to the Savage Nation. God, God bless you, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm an ordained minister and was a volunteer police captain of the city of Newark Police Department for about 19 years. Uh, last year, uh, Barak got elected to the city of Newark city cap- uh, to, as a mayor, and uh, by the end of the year, he dissolved the, uh, the chaplaincy of the clergy affairs unit 
because there were much too many Christians in it. He catered to the, the um, what I believe, the, the, to the Muslim crying out loud because they were con- controlling some of the some of the city hall. And uh, who, who did this? A mayor of Newark, you said? Yes. And what was his name? Bak Barak. Oh, I see. They elected a Muslim as mayor, and, and they were shocked to find out that he was a bigot? <laughs> they were shocked to find that he was an anti-Christian bigot? How, how, how shocking can that be? How shocking can that be? Correct, Dr. Savage. Correct. So the ministry was dissolved. Right? It was all volunteer, but I, I had a love for the city, for its people, because they were hurting. And now the murder rate's about 35, 36 homicides and about 100 people shot. Well, that's very democratic. I mean, that's fairness. If it's, as long as they're killing across the uh, ethnic spectrum, I would say that's fair. But if only uh, minorities are being killed in this crime wave, I think that's unfair. And I think they need to execute some white people in order to make the, uh, the homicide rate equal, don't you? I get your right, Dr. Well, I think that's the next step for de Blasio, is to make certain that white people are lined up and shot in order to make sure that there's diversity and fairness in the outcome of the uh, homicide spike. I mean, that's the only way we're going to achieve our, our, our goals of fairness in, in New York and Newark, isn't it? I, you, you have a great point there, uh, Dr. Sarah, a great point. Listen, sometimes you have to use sarcasm to make your point, and I hope that you understand I'm just being sarcastic. Alan, I'm sorry that you lost your love in life. I'm sorry that the country is melting down so rapidly under this evil that is emanating from the, you know, there's a saying, the fish rots from the head down. And this nation is rotting because the head of the fish is rotten. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca, my latest best-selling novel. Please stay on the line. Here's a story. Some gays in the Navy want to kick out a long-serving, decorated chaplain for using the Bible in private counseling sessions. I swear to God, they set him up, you see. This Navy chaplain, his name is Mr. Motor, M-O-D-D-E-R. He's a former Navy SEAL, by the way. He's not one of those, uh, let us say, mumbo-jumbo types. 20 years in the Marines in the Navy. Stints with SEAL Team 6, deployed many times in the war on terror, uh, receiving glowing reviews from his commanding officers. But his superior, Captain F.A.H.S., mm-hmm, set him up. They assigned to him a gay man as his assistant. And because this minister continued to use the Bible, they reported him. And now they're trying to throw him out of the military. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Since Don't Ask, Don't Tell was revoked by President Obama, some openly gay service members have gone on a witch hunt in the armed services, seeking out anyone who they perceive as not fully supportive of the radical homosexual agenda. They have kept a particularly sharp eye on military chaplains who more than likely are teaching what the Bible says, that it is immoral and not countenanced by God, along with other things such as sex outside of marriage. Well, Cap. Chaplain Wes Motor was saying such things in private counseling sessions, and a coterie of gay sailors convinced Motor's superior officer to take action against him. And what did the, the new Navy do? The new Navy under Barack Obama removed Reverend Motor from the promotion list, detached him for cause, they fired him, and they brought him before an official board of inquiry where he could be forced out of the Navy. Now, we remember reading that Christians were persecuted by the communist Chinese, remember? Well, right now, Christians are being persecuted by the communist militants in the military. Yesterday, Motors attorneys, the Public Interest Liberty Institute, filed an Article 138 complaint against the superior captain, FAHS. The complaint says that Captain FAHS denied Chaplain Motors' request for the religious accommodation based on outdated regulations. They say that Captain FAHS unlawfully censored Chaplain Motors' free exercise of religion by denying his request for a religious accommodation. Here is a man again, a member of SEAL Team 6, a man of God who was simply quoting the Bible. And you like to think that Christians were thrown to the lions in ancient Rome? Well, right now the Christians are being thrown to the lions in modern Barack Obama America. How do you like that? How's that an example of bullying? You think that's fair? WABC, Mark, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you doing today? How oh, I'm doing? You know, I'm not your friend. What's on your mind? <laughs> I'm trying to understand your, your diversity in the workplace. Uh, do you have an example of, of how it, it is lining up and, and killing the Christians or targeting the whites? Yes, I sure do. I'll give you an example. When I was forced to go to a diversity training session, 
They put a little Buddhist uh, statue in the front with a candle burning. And the lecturers, which consisted of an overly sized woman with short hair, a very short Asian, and I forget which other type was there. They lectured the group for over 30 minutes on the evils of Christianity and the homophobia and racism of white people. Is, is that a clear enough example? Well, if they use those words, then I would say, yeah, you probably should have some legal action against that. Well, I, I'm sure I should have had legal action. Instead, I cursed them out and left the, left the session. But I wasn't alone. This goes on across America. I don't think you understand what's being done to people in this country. Yeah, I mean, I've gone through several workshops. I've never experienced anything remotely like that. It's always- All right, so tell me what you've experienced at these pleasant uh, diversity training sessions. What have you experienced? I've experienced a neutral blend. Try not to associate, you know, going up to someone who might be uh, African-American and saying, hey, did you see the basketball game last night? Uh, adapt into stereotypes. Wait, wait, you mean, you mean they're telling people not to ask an African-American about a basketball game? You don't see the absurdity of that, of that teaching? Well, what they're trying to show you is that it could be considered discriminatory by doing... It's insanity. What are you, and you're buying it? That that's not insane? No, no, no. It's a neutral approach to it. It's not something that I'm, I'm feeling intimidated that I have... But what do you mean by a neutral approach? You're telling you not to ask an African-American about a basketball game because you may offend him? That's correct, especially if you don't know the person, then he might not... I see. So what should you ask your African-American uh, uh, co- cohort at work? What are you allowed to ask him? How about anything except for applying a stereotype? And, and what do they tell you to do about Jews who wear a yarmulke? Is there some uh, special code word you're not allowed to use? No, I are, haven't. Are you not allowed to ask them about corn? You can't go up to a Jew with a yarmulke and ask him how the corned beef is? Uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I've heard. Oh, they haven't gotten around to that. So how was the corned beef sandwich, A.B.? You can't. That's not allowed. Are you, what, what are you, kidding me? Haven't you ever heard of free speech? What do you mean you can't ask a black man about basketball? Why not? Well, because I guess, again, you're, you're applauding the stereotype. Are you crazy? I'm serious, absolutely. I mean, you, you have... So you buy into this crap? You actually think that's a reasonable thing to teach people what not to say? Well, again, it's an example of how if it goes the other way around, it could... Or let's take it the other way around. What are black people told not to say to white people? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're... No, because they're not taught... No, they're not taught anything. Isn't that right? What are gays and lesbians taught not to say to straight Christians? How about nothing? How about they're not taught anything? Don't you understand that the inherent bias is in who is being told what not to say? Don't you see that? Well, I, like I, In other words, if they're not lecturing blacks on what not to say to whites and not, not lecturing gays on what not to say to Christians for fear of offending them, don't you see the inherent bias in that? Mm, well, again... Of course you don't because you're a brainwashed dolt. You're the perfect idiot. You're the perfect candidate for brainwashing because your brain was washed before you were born. There's no Dura Mater there between the ears. This is an example. This is America today. But at least the man called. I have to give him credit for that. Nothing is new under the sun. I read Animal Farm. I read it when I was 18 years old. Right now you're living through Animal Farm. Yeah, I used to hear the joke that the the inmates are running the asylum. Well, now you have bullying inmates running the asylum. That's the difference. Bullying inmates running the asylum. The Asylum. WBAP, Tamara, Dallas, Texas, thanks for calling. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Tamara? At my employer, they made a big deal about the Indiana RFPA, and the president of the company puts out the company bulletin of, we've leaned in on the governor, and we've made... I'm not not following you, ma'am. I'm sorry I lost you. It's because I'm not fast enough. Please tell me what you are referring to. Okay. Uh, Indiana, a couple months ago, had the Religious Freedom Protection Act that would have extended protection to people who said, I don't want to make a gay wedding cake because it is a violation of... Okay. And, and what, happened, what happened with that? The head of the company published a letter in our company bulletin and said, we have leaned in on the governor of the state and threatened to withdraw our business if they do this because it's a violation of our principles. And... I was talking to some other people and went, there's no way they're going to relocate a facility with thousands of people and millions of dollars of equipment. What, what do you, I, I'm not, Tamara, I'm really not following you. I'm not understanding you. You're saying people are not allowed to talk about gays bullying pizzerias and bakers. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying you should be able to say, I don't want to make the wedding cake. I don't want to participate in the business. Well, the company you know, has this formal stance. You're, you know, 
that we're going to stand up for these values. And a number of people brought up, hey, this is not a violation of rights, and if you want to talk about hypocrisy, we do business in Saudi Arabia. Why are you talking about taking our business out of That's right. Right, and why don't you talk about the real homophobia of throwing gays off roofs in Iraq? Why don't you talk about the real atrocities against humanities that ISIS is committing while Obama plays golf, a kidnapping eight-year-old girls and raping them and selling them into slavery? That's a real crime against humanity. And I'm fully aware of that. And when one of the managers who brought up the hypocrisy of threatening to take business out of Indiana and doing business with Saudi Arabia and signing new contracts with them, he told me he's concerned about getting demoted because he publicly criticized the president of the company. That's right. So there we go. So that, that's bullying. The corporations have all caved into these bullies. I know that. They'd rather, they'd rather do whatever's required the minute the bullies show up. And this started with Al Sharpton shaking companies down, in my opinion. Jesse Jackson was the original bully, threatening boycotts unless they caved in and threw him a grant or threw him a contract. And it's now spiraled out of control. Where we have an avalanche of bullying in the United States of America, and it has to come to an end today, right now, right here. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca is the novel, sending you a free copy, 855 I'm telling you, the individuals listening to the show, here's what I'm saying to you. You know, you're listening to me enraged over this, and you know I'm right. And you feel that you're being somehow relieved of some of the burden of fighting yourself because I'm doing it for you. That's good. That's what I'm paid to do. But you see, the, the, the work really begins when this show ends. The work begins the next time you encounter one of these little tyrants. The work begins when you say, should I really say anything, or should I just walk the other way and mind my business? That's where the work begins. You have to stand up and be counted. Even if it's the most, the smallest issue, you must not cave into the bullies. There are ways to do it politely. If they're not polite, escalate it. If they escalate it, escalate it. You don't have to take it. You live in a free country. If they feel free to put you down, if they feel free to put you down as a Christian or as anything else, you have every right to stand up and say, I am offended by that. And I'm not going to take it. And I think you're a little bully. And I want you out of my face. Get the hell out of my face, bully. Now, what would happen if 10 million people said, get the hell out of my face, bully? Imagine in America. I want you to imagine 10 or 20 million Americans, the next time they're confronted by one of these bullies, well, do it politely. And if they don't get out of your way and they keep it up, say, get out of my face, bully. What would happen if 20 million of us did that? I want you to visualize that, all you 1970s visualizers, all you good liberals who have poisoned America with your liberalism. Visualize that as I take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Michael Savage here. I've hoped over the last day or two to change the paradigm on the bullies that are uh, pushing us all around in this country. There are a very, very tiny minority of individuals who are now ruling America from the universities to the corporations. Wherever you turn, there they are telling you what to think, what to say, what not to say. And as a result, the nation has turned into a nation of cowards. And I'm telling you that we, the people, have the power to stand up to these bullies. And we're going to do it. And I'm going to continue to talk about how to fight back against these bullies. And no matter what form they come in, no matter what shape they come in, you can stand up to them. We live in a free country, the land of the free and the home of the brave. That doesn't give these bullies the power to tell you what to think and what to say. You have the power to think in what you say, what you want. Now, there are powers you have that you may not even know about. Legal powers, for sure. You actually have the legal power to speak your mind. Now, you're afraid that you'll be retaliated against, as was that woman in the DHS who lost her job and had her gun taken away from her. We know how fascistic the DHS has become. We know that it is the SS, or the SA, rather, of Barack Obama. We understand what he's done here. It's not a DHS to protect us. It's a DHS to protect the government from us, from we the people. That doesn't mean that everyone in the DHS is a goose stepper. It means that the management is who I am talking about. We understand who they are. We understand why they've been put there. We understand that they do the bidding of the sorority that surrounds Obama, the Praetorian Guard, the sorority girls who protect him. 
that they're using every agency in the government to intimidate the people and protect the president who everyone can see through? We understand that. Let's take some a few callers here on the Sabbath. Oh, I have no more time. They're unbelievable. If you want to hold on the line, we'll do so in the next hour about how bullies are lowering standards in the military, how bullies are lowering standards in the fire department, how bullies are lower, lowering standards in the police department, how bullying are decimating academia, how bullies are, bullies are destroying the corporate world. Yeah, you heard me. There are prices to be paid because of these communist bullies. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome I've back to The Savage Nation. We're talking about standing up to the bullies in America, the bullies, whether they be the president or his left-wing minion in, minions in the universities, schools, corporations. Wherever you turn, you got the bullies telling you what you can say, what you can't say, how to think, how not to think. It is so un-American, and yet most of us have forgotten what it means to be an American. We've forgotten that one of the chief tenets of this country is the land of the free and the home of the brave, where free speech reigns. And yet this small cadre of fanatics have taken upon themselves to maintain free speech only for themselves. Well, I guess you haven't read Animal Farm. And I've asked you to call about your experiences with bullies and how they are lowering standards in police departments, fire departments, military, you name it. Everywhere you turn, standards are being lowered as a result of these bullies. I'd like to take some of these calls we have been holding for quite a while. Let's begin on WJR in Detroit. Dave, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? What's your experience? I work at, uh, under contract at the biggest car company in the world, and uh, I've interviewed for several full-time positions within the company, and I, I see myself not getting hired because I don't fit the profile of a minority or, or a some other uh, less, uh, well, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, LGBT or something like that, uh, a profile because I know that they're being filled with these jobs because the people who get the job that I interviewed for sit right next to me in one case. Well, what, what company is this? The biggest car company in the world. The biggest car company in the world? Yes. The one the okay, I, I don't want you to spell it out because I don't want you to de jeopardize. So in other words, they have a mandate to hire minorities and others and to avoid the dreaded white male. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And, they, and every time they say, oh, you did a great job in your interview. You've got a lot of experience. You've got you just everything we need. And I never hear back. I call. They don't call me. Mm. I said email. Mm. Call me. And then the next day, the guy, an American Indian guy is sitting next to me with no experience. He's an electrical engineer. Great. But he's working at a car company on transmissions. It doesn't make any sense. Well, of course it makes sense. If you want a communist revolution, you've got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. It doesn't matter whether the car company can still produce excellent cars. It doesn't matter if the military can still fire a shot straight. It doesn't matter if the police can actually stop the thugs. It doesn't matter if the fire people can still put out fires. What matters is that there's diversity. The important thing is that diversity reigns. You see, that's how uh, it works after a revolution. Diversity becomes king. Diversity trumps, uh, you know, I, I said it best. 25 years ago, uh, before I was in radio, when I said, without quality, there can be no equality. I guess it fell on deaf ears. Uh, however, I still have a very large audience of people who understand that without quality, there can be no equality. So I guess that's a little too literate for some of these hires. Don't even try it on them. They wouldn't even understand what you're saying. They'd have to go to the diversity training book to see if you said something that was so on PC that they can get you in trouble. 855-407-282. Andrew, WABC, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. I stood up to a bully, Mayor Raz Baraka in Newark. You had an earlier caller speak of him. 
I was on a story. I'm a video journalist, and they had a uh, Jim Brown there. It was an anti-gang uh, group of volunteers, and I was nervous. I was the only white guy, inner city, all black, mostly leftist Democrat. And I said during the Q and A, I said, I grew up right up the street from here in South Orange. There was black people all around me. We didn't need any anti-gang force. We didn't. We didn't have guns. My friends didn't have guns. I said. Why don't you try to lessen government dependency and get more followers in the homes? Then you won't need a gang task force. That's what I told him. And then he lied in his response, but I was so proud to stand up to him and do some good and try to do some good. Yeah, but did they did they boo you and uh, boo you anger there, uh, out of there? Well, they were looking at me nasty, but then I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with the African-American female doctor and I was thinking she was going to be against me, and I was still pitching my case. I said, I saw how welfare reform worked in the city of Newark. I saw the stricter drug laws. There were less drug dealers trying to... And she's like, no, no, you're right. She was agreeing. She's like, you're absolutely right. Well, we know what happened. I don't want to make this all about African Americans, because it's by far and away out of control in this country from many other sectors. And the African American community is, community is the least responsible for this political correctness, incidentally. It's not emanating from that community whatsoever. And I want to make that point clear. We know where it's coming from. We know who started it. We know how it works. We know who's running everything. We know who's jamming it down our throats. We don't have to look any farther than our own uh, surroundings to know where it's coming from. Bill on WDRC Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello, Dr. Savage. Uh, Bill from uh, uh, WABC, uh, New York City. And I hear you in a, a, a station from Hartford. Okay, uh, so what's your point today? I'd like to uh, say, get off of my lawn. I am sick of these guys invading get, us. I am get, off, get off my lawn, you said? Get off of my lawn or my wand? I am telling these guys, get off my lawn, because I'm over 50 now, Mike. I'm a white nationalist, and I'm telling, I, telling you I am sick of the invasion What's happening in our country? I am sick of the feminization of our men. Our men identify. Well, don't get me started on the feminization of the of the male. I know when this started. It started a long time ago in the schools. Uh, they tried to drug it out of the boy masculinity out of the boys. They tried to shame the boy masculinity out of the boys. It's been going on for at least, so far as I could tell, forty years uh, in, in our school system, where they virtually targeted. The male, both, uh, it doesn't matter what race, the male was targeted. The male was targeted. That was the point. And so that's how they broke down the land, the home, the land of the free and the home of the brave is by targeting the males. It's shocking to me that we still have men who uh, can still fight, men who still go into the MMA ring, men who still enlist in the military, men who still enlist in the police force. I find it shocking that men still exist in the country. After what the feminists have done to the males in this country, both through social engineering and through drugs, I'm shocked that any men, any boys have survived into manhood altogether. Incidentally, you say I'm crazy? Go look around and see what's going on. Go look around and see what's going on in your country. K-E-R-N, Bakersfield, California. Brian, very nice to hear from you what's on your mind out of Bakersfield. Hi, um... I was just earlier you were talking about the whole sensitivity training thing that you had to go through in the university system. Yep. Well, I'm in construction. What you would think is more of a, an institution where you can joke around with each other, you know, you can josh around a little bit and this and that. Well, 10 years ago when I first got into it, you could razz each other and you could, I mean, you could have a lot of fun with it. Nowadays, you can get fired for saying the vaguest little thing and it's just kind of silly because it's construction. You would, uh, yeah, this is what fascism has brought to America. This is what liberalism has brought to America. This is what all of the good women of America who have told us what not to say and what to say have brought to America. They've always been fascists. I've known them to be fascists, the mind controllers. Now, when you say you're not allowed to speak on your construction site, most of construction sites today have Hispanic men working very hard alongside uh, others. Are they also constrained by these rules, or is it because they speak in Spanish they can say what they want? 
they can say whatever they want. We catch we we catch them constantly saying negative things about us. Oh, Smack. oh! I thought I thought that they were far more superior in that way. I thought Hispanics had more sensitivity because their culture was inherently wiser than ours. I thought that they would not reser- re- revert to such uh, uh, such things because their culture was so superior to ours. So it's just as I thought. It's targeted only at the white male. Is that correct? Oh, completely. I mean, completely. You have you have Hispanic supervisors and uh, general contractors that walk through. And they, they can hear it, you can hear it, and they don't say a word. So the Spanish workers often uh, uh, espouse slurs on white workers, is that what you're saying? Yeah, oh no, all the time. Really? Really? I guess we have to now ask for equal opportunity in the workplace and ask the government to supply us with some Spanish sensitivity uh, workers on construction sites so they can monitor Hispanic workers in Spanish and hear what they're saying about other races. Maybe, maybe that would stop it. <laughs> probably not, because they'd probably join in with them. Because they, <laughs> we, we can't understand. Well, you you get the picture. It's a country that is melting down socially, at every possible level. Brian, I have a gift for you. My novel countdown to Mecca. I'm sure you'll read it for Father's Day, or give it to someone who will read it for Father's Day. And again, if you missed this little note yesterday, I feel obligated to tell it to you today. It's a little housekeeping, uh, along the lines of I'm not for myself. Who will be? If I'm only for myself. Uh, what am I? Ratings have come in for the last month. If I don't give them to you, you're not going to hear about them because no one tells you the other guy's ratings when they're good. They only tell you the other guy's ratings when they're bad. So we'll give you one from the East and one from the West. WABC, powerhouse, 50,000-watt station in New York City. Ratings came in for the month of May. Persons 12 plus, the Savage Nation with Michael Savage is ranked number one on WABC. On the West Coast, San Francisco for the month of May. KSFO Radio, San Francisco. Persons 25 to 54. Number one, Michael Savage, 12 to 3. Michael Savage, number one. Congratulations, Mike. I guess I have to talk to myself in this PC world where I am only criticized and never rewarded. 855-407282. This is a sad day, isn't it? And you could say, well, why aren't you talking about the trade agreement? Why aren't you talking about Rubio's boat? Why aren't you doing what the other show hosts are doing? It's because they do it. I don't have to do it. I feel it's far more important to take society problems, society's problems on in a different way, in my own way. And my own way is to talk about bullying. I've changed the paradigm of the discussion. I am pretty confident that because I have empowered so many people over the last two days to start seeing these people for what they are, As bullies, we can change the course of this society by standing up to these freaks and perverts who tell us what we can and cannot say and calling them what they are, which are bullies, and using the law against them for their bullying, we just might be able to save our freedom. I can't guarantee it. I don't know how many of you will have the nerve to actually do it. Uh, Certainly at the risk of losing your job, I wouldn't ask you to lose your job. But think think it through carefully. Try to understand the next time you're confronted by one of these freakazoids that you have the power to say to them, hey, you, you're being a bully. I'm going to report you to the EEOC. I'm going to get a lawyer and I'm going to sue you personally. Stop bullying me. Get off my back. I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible. You have no right to tell me what I can believe or not believe. You're a bully. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Wherever you go, you will encounter people who doubt your very existence. Folks who believe that hardworking families with strong values don't exist on the south side of Chicago or in Detroit or in El Paso or in Indian country or in Appalachia. They don't believe you are real. So she's become one of the chief bullies now in America. Whatever happened to the quiet first lady, the dignified first lady, the first lady who did civic things? How did she suddenly become such a bully? Uh, any other questions? Because I have the answers. We're talking about bullying, and we're talking about the bully pulpit. In this case, it truly is inhabited by bullies. What else can they go after now? They've trampled our flag. They've trampled our country. What's left? Tell me what's left. 
these bullies. I'd like to know when there's going to be a counter-bullying in this country. Man, I'd like to see an army of 10 million counter these bullies. I'd love to see them stand up and scream in their faces. You know, wherever I go, I run into bullies, whether it's a nasty Prius driver on the highway trying to cut me off from the right lane with an Obama-Biden bumper sticker from 2008. Everywhere I turn, there's a bully. I went to the supermarket, for example, and I'm shopping, not bothering anybody, and I'm checking out. It was just jammed in the supermarket. All of the mothers were getting their coffee and giving their children uh, donuts and coffee before sending them off with their current medication to, to the government school. And I swear to God, I'm standing on the checkout line. I had a lot of items, like two bags worth. And there was a woman behind me, middle-aged, decently dressed, 40 years old. Did you ever get someone who tries to push you through the, the thing that's moving, like with your stuff on it? She has to put her coffee right. I'm talking an inch away from your stuff. And you're not through unloading your cart. And I look at her and say, excuse me, lady, I'm not finished yet. Could you take your flowers and coffee? I don't want to hurt your flowers and spill your coffee. She says, oh, my, you have nice radishes. I said, okay, fine. She said, my, my radishes were nice, very nice. All right, so she takes back the flowers and coffee and lets me have the conveyor belt back. Meanwhile, the clerk is ringing and ringing and zinging, and I'm moving up to the cash thing. And you know there's a little shelf right next to where you slide your card? where most normal people put their wallet or whatever they took the card out of, where you sign the bill. This woman puts her hot coffee cup on that shelf. I look at her. I said, lady, what's wrong with you? Why are you pushing like this? You know what she said? Nothing. Another drug-addicted Stepford wife in Marin County. There are bullies everywhere, on the low level, on the high level. We're living in a new age. I'm fed up with the society. If I were running for office, I wouldn't just be a meek taking it from the, from the media type. I would demand a revolution in the country to save it. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even mince words. I say, I want a revolution of borders, language, and culture. Period. That's what I stand for. If I'm elected, the military will be taken out of South Korea and, and Germany and put on the border with Mexico, with bayonets if necessary. We'll put tanks on the border. English only, especially at the ballot box. You know, in this sick, twisted city, this corrupt city of San Francisco, the vermin who run it, made it legal for the voter pamphlets to be published in six or eight different languages. Why? That's to make sure that the criminal gang stays in power. They have been put in power by the gangsters. The gangsters have been kept in power by the illegal aliens they have ushered into the city. If you can't read English, you don't vote in my country. If you can't write English, you don't vote in my country. That's language. Do I have to spell it out for you? And I'll tell you what the revolution in culture is. I can make it very simple for you. I can spell it out for you very clearly. This nation was built upon Judeo-Christian values. If you don't like it, it's too damn bad. No, we're not Wiccans. No, we're not Muslims. No, we are not those things. You can be it if you want, but you're not going to tell us this nation was founded by a bunch of devil worshippers, and you're not going to tell us the nation was founded by Muslims, because it was not. We don't chop people's hands off if they steal. We don't throw rocks at women who commit adultery. We don't throw homosexuals off roofs. This country was founded on justice and peace in the Judeo-Christian manner. Borders, language, and culture, that's my revolution. If you don't like it, it's too damn bad. Vote for me or don't vote for me. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up and go to the corner and come out fighting the next round. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor, but don't cut your gloves off. Because the fight's not over. Justice will come to Ferguson. This is one of the worst people in American history. He's done more harm to the social fabric than all of our foreign enemies combined, in my estimation. Al Sharpton was used as the street thug for the bully-in-chief in the White House, for Eric Holder in the Attorney General's office. They used this little street thug to turn a war on the police into an epidemic. The street thug, as you know, has not been heard from for a while. They put him on ice because they know what he did, and they know that it's too politically dangerous to bring the thug out from the curtain again. But you're talking about bullying? Does it get any worse than this thug attacking police for defending a city? And that's why I say to you, unless you stand up to these bullies now, all is lost. I know how this ends. 
I have studied communist revolutions. I know what equal outcome based programs yield. It yielded this in the uh, ex Red China. After Mao Zedong became a dictator, he caused the Red Revolution. He unleashed a vicious, a vicious epidemic of young bullies who uh, tied red scarves around their heads, the Red Brigades, and they went around, just as these leftists are going around in America, intimidating the middle class, telling them that they were counter-revolutionaries, telling them they weren't PC enough. As a result, the finest surgeons in China were put into the laundries of hospitals, and uneducated peasants from the fields were turned into doctors. Does that sound familiar to you? Do you see what's going on right in front of your eyes? How long have I warned you? that there has been a communist revolution in America. You don't understand, it's, it's been done step by step, not through the barrel of a gun, but Obama is so clever. I should say the, the people who put the stooge in power are so clever that they used a different method of imposing a sort of communist revolution on America. Now, people will scoff at this and say, oh, come on, Savage. A communist revolution means that all the means of production and control are, control, are controlled by the government. Well, my friends, we are talking about the society first. If they intimidate you, if they intimidate the people, if they break down the will of the people, everything else will follow. They are so close now to total and absolute power through terror over the average person that I chose to do this a second day in a row. I am focusing on these left-wing fascist scum, these bullies at every level. I have one story after another showing you bullying, military gays bullying Christians. You ready for this one? California trains professors to avoid microaggressions. Who do you think is behind this at the University of California, which has been decimated by Janet Napolitano? This was once one of the finest universities in the world. It has since fallen into disrepair. It is now in the toilet, in the garbage, because Janet Napolitano has taken over the entire UC system. She is now training faculty members at University of California to avoid describing America as a, quote, land of opportunity. She says those phrases are offensive microaggressions. According to psychotic anti-white activists, so-called microaggressions are subtle actions, usually unintentional, that perpetuate discrimination against so-called disadvantaged groups, even in environments where overt discrimination has been abolished. So the vermin thought police have now infected the University of California with the chief bug, Janet Napolitano, formally training faculty to avoid and root out these perceived microaggressions for the good of all. You want to hear what else they're not allowed to say? One of the largest categories of microaggressions, according to Janet Napolitano and a left-wing fascist goon squad, are those that promote the myth of meritocracy. Did you hear what I just said to you? The myth of meritocracy. The myth of meritocracy? That's a myth? You mean there are people who are smarter than others? There are people who are swifter than others? Are you crazy? Do you have any idea what this is going to lead to? I know where it leads. I've studied these things. Other things they're not allowed to say is this. Quote, I believe the most qualified person should get the job. That's a microaggression. Here's another one. Affirmative action is racist. Hello? What else is it but racism? Other examples of sinister microaggressions, according to Janet Napolitano, are, one, describing America as a melting pot because it forces people to assimilate. Two, stating that there is only one race, the human race. It denies the significance of a person's ethnic or racial history. So, in other words, the psychotic leftists want segregation. Asking Asians, Hispanics, or Native Americans to speak up more. That pathologizes foreign norms and treats white norms as normal, using he as a generic pronoun for all people. It makes the male experience universal and the female experience invisible. Using forms where individuals must identify as male or female because it excludes the full LGBT experience. Do you have any idea where this sickness has come from? Do you have any idea where this virus ends? Do you have any idea how a civilization melts down? I'm warning you that if you don't stand up to these tyrants, these bullies, I don't care what they call themselves, the country is over. Now, many of you don't believe this is happening because the media continues to bend over backwards to support a president who will not even say the word Islamic when he talks about the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. They call themselves 
ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, and yet this gangster in the White House won't even use the word Islamic. They call themselves Islamic, but he says they aren't. Nevertheless, in this country, in every conceivable space, from immigration policy to law enforcement to education to social policy to the military, Islam is accommodated and defended while Christianity and Judaism are attacked. Left-wing publications print completely false stories about university campus rapes, military rapes that don't exist, while ISIS forces eight-year-old girls to marry if they're Muslim and become sex slaves if they aren't. Where are the feminists who are outraged over these atrocities? Why aren't gay activists marching in the streets over ISIS throwing homosexuals off rooftops? I'll tell you why. They're too busy bullying Christian bakeries and pizzerias out of business for not wanting to bend at the knee to their homosexual weddings. Meanwhile, the Obama bullies have refused to curb illegal immigration through our southern border or to deport them once they're caught in violation of the bully's oath. But let me tell you something. Illegal immigrants from Central and South America are not the biggest immigration threat facing us. Much more dangerous are the hundreds of thousands of Muslims this administration has brought in through its refugee program from war-torn Muslim countries such as Somalia and now Syria. I get the, most people don't care. They're listening to, uh, I don't know. Whether, we hear the talk radio is aimed only at the dying population of old white men. Well, hey, old white men, welcome to the Savage Nation. Let's enjoy the uh, fall together. Are you kidding me? That's the only audience for talk radio? Who do you believe? That's true? How do you explain that I have a 25 share on devices? Who's listening to me on devices? 70-year-olds or 20-year-olds? Who's listening to Michael Savage, the most listened to streaming talk radio show in the United States of America? Who do you think's listening to me on iPhones and Androids and things like that nature? The young millennials who know what's going on, the very few who do. The very few who are homeschooled, the very few who are Christian, the very few who understand what patriotism is, the very few who come from a military or a police family, they're the backbone of America, not the drug-addicted left-wing fanatics who've been bullied into submission. That's who I'm talking about. Don't tell me that the only people listening to this radio show are old people. And if it was, so what? You should be ashamed if you're an old person? Suddenly being older is, is a shame in America? What, it became a thing of pride to be an 18-year-old moron? No, I don't think so. I am showing you what happened yesterday where a left-winger by the name of Bernie Sanders was, a, they attempted to ridicule him with a Jewish blood libel because it's not that he was not left enough, it's that he didn't uh, uh, cater to the Palestinian party line that the National Palestinian Radio espouses. National Palestinian Radio, NPR, is paid for uh, with your money. And the hate du jour is now directed at Jews and Israel. Of course, it's not anti-Semitism. It's just called anti-Zionism. But as Martin Luther King Jr. said famously, make no mistake about it. There ain't no difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. He knew where it was coming from. He knew that the rabid left hated Jews. And so there was Diane Rem. By the way, she's of Arab descent. There was Diane Rem ripping Bernie Sanders apart, saying that he was on a list of uh, members of Congress with dual citizenship. Now, if I had ever done that on this radio show, let's say I got, let's say Barack Obama agreed to an interview with his political opponents, and he came on this show and I said to him, Mr. Obama, isn't it true that you're a Muslim? Tell me what would happen to my career. You know that I wouldn't last another second. There'd be a meltdown of this show. But she goes on the next day like nothing happened because she's a member in good standing of the fascist brigades that are running this country. It goes on on every level of our society. We have the president bullying the Supreme Court. We have the LGBT community bullying everybody. I am sick of it, and we've got to fight back. It is time to fight back against these fascists. They are nothing but fascists in the garb of minority discrimination cases. Period. End of story. Don't tell me this such thing as a meritocracy. Let's apply it to the football field. You're telling me that a 110-pound woman can be a fullback on a football team? Wouldn't that be nonsense? Let's make it very simple for these psychotics. Why, there's meritocracy there. Let's put a 110-pound man in the ring with a 220-pound heavyweight. Let's talk about meritocracy. Why, the heavyweight will blow on him and knock him down. Is that not meritocracy? He's a better fighter. Where are your brains? How do you buy into this crap? 
How did these infested morons get so powerful? How did a psychotic like Janet Napolitano be handed the keys to the University of California? In my day, that woman couldn't run a ding-dong school. She would have been fired running an elementary school in Mississippi somewhere for the abuse of the children. Now she's running one of the X great universities in the world. Look what she's done to it. Of course there's meritocracy. Are you crazy? You mean the engineers who created the first rocket to the moon didn't do so because they were smarter than the people who couldn't be engineers? You mean that surgeon with a scalpel in his hand who performs the most intricate kind of surgery uh, has not achieved that through meritocracy? Where are you brains, you leftist psychotics, you? When are you going to wake up to what you have done to this country and admit finally you're going to call the show one day and say, Michael Savage, I was wrong. Michael Savage, you were right. Michael Savage, keep it up. Michael Savage, speak out for us. Otherwise, all is lost. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-A. The risk since Obama has seized control of this nation. He has used the bully pulpit to bully everyone in this nation into submission. He certainly has bullied the Republicans into submission. They don't exist as a loyal opposition. They don't exist at all. We know that. The street thugs in Ferguson, the street thugs in Baltimore bullying the cops, the ACLU bullying Christians everywhere, Muslims in America bullying you everywhere to tell you that, wait a minute now, how dare you even ask us about our loyalty you have no right to ask us. What are you even looking at us for? Who are you to say that uh, most of the terrorism in the world is caused by Muslims? Are you crazy? That's, uh, that's not true. And even if it is, it's racist. The illegal aliens who have been allowed to pour over our borders, running amok in America, demanding everything for free. Yes, you heard me. And if they were all coming here to work, then how do you account for the fact that one-third of all of our prisoners are non-citizens? Put that into your pot pipe and smoke it. Obama bullying the Supreme Court, Al Sharpton bullying the police, wherever you turn, bullying, bullying, bullying. There are many examples. I played an example of a creep on NPR putting a Jewish blood libel on the leftist Bernie Sanders, which is kind of ironic because Bernie Sanders is an outright communist from the get-go, I mean a classic communist, and yet he wasn't leftist enough for the pro-Palestinian national Palestinian radio. Listen to the interchange between this creature on uh, NPR, who I never heard of, by the way, I have no idea why she's on the air, attacking Bernie Sanders, implying he is libel as a Jew. Listen. Senator, you have dual citizenship with Israel. Well, well, no, I do not have dual citizenship with Israel. I'm an Amer That's, I don't know where that question came from. I am an American citizen, and I have visited Israel on a couple of occasions. No, I'm an American citizen, period. I understand from a list we have gotten that a you list. are on that list a for list. me if that you know, little that's nuts some nonsense you. that goes on in Good the Good for you, Bernie. Uh, spit in their face. No She's got a list that are little there fascist. Members of Congress are there any members of the party there, huh, you lousy? Ah, oh, shut up. Get her off my show. Why wasn't she fired? Because there's no opposition party. No opposition party. This woman never belonged on the air. Why is she on the air? Because she does the bidding of National Palestinian Radio. That's why. Any other questions? 855-407-282. Wherever you turn, the Lilliputians have taken over the country. You remember Jerry Lewis with his Labor Day telethon? Remember the great work he did? He raised hundreds of millions of dollars for children with muscular dystrophy. Do you remember what they did to Jerry Lewis? Do you remember what the haters did to him? They said that he wasn't right for the job anymore. Headline, muscular dystrophy finally ends Labor Day show after firing Jerry Lewis and killing Telethon. Roger Friedman, Showbiz 411. They killed their golden goose. Muscular Dystrophy Association decided no more TV special on Labor Day weekend. This is probably an old story. They had already destroyed the 21-hour annual Telethon after kicking Jerry Lewis to the curb. They said that the show was a fraud, and they got rid of him. And so what happened was they couldn't raise any more money. The show uh, after he left was whittled down to a two-hour pre-tape, a shadow of what Jerry Lewis had done with it, and now it's gone altogether. Why? Why did they get rid of Jerry Lewis? The Jerry's Kids rubric meant so much to people who had little hope and a lot of problems. 
But the new Muscular Dystrophy Association, the PC Muscular Dystrophy Association, is so out of touch with reality that after firing Jerry Lewis, the organization itself is fundamentally gone. That's what will happen to America if you let the left-wing fanatics continue on their rampage against everything decent in this country, whether it be in police departments, whether it be in the military, whether it be in the universities. It does not matter where. The vermin on the left have touched everybody equally with their, with their psychotic poison. The radical LGBT community has unleashed an epidemic of bullying unlike any seen in American history. We have the president bullying the Supreme Court. We have the LGBT community bullying everybody. We have Muslims bullying the entire West. We have street thugs in Baltimore bullying cops. How do you feel about that? You better stand up and be counted. I'm warning you. And that means whether you're on a supermarket line or at a PTA meeting, don't let these monsters take over that meeting and tell you what to think. You stand up and you speak out. Be red-faced about it. Be embarrassed about it. But get the guts or you're going to lose everything. I'm warning you. Savage.